and I realize that I have weaknesses, but I also have strengths. I do make mistakes, but I'm not all a mistake. And I mean, it took me a long time to really get that. I would go and stand in the mirror and point at myself and say, God loves you. God loves you. And because I couldn't figure out why I couldn't love people, I kept hearing as a Christian I needed to love people, and I just was not a very loving person. All right, how about setting boundaries? Got it. Yes, I like that. You know, people that have been wounded, we either do one of two things. We either let people take advantage of us because we're so afraid nobody's going to like us that we are afraid to say no to anybody, or we turn it the other way around and we try to take advantage of everybody else because we feel like we'll never have anything if we don't stay on top all the time. You know, I came out of my abuse very aggressive. You know, like, nobody's ever going to push me around again and no man's ever going to tell me what to do again and I'm not going to put up with that and I'm not going to put up with this. Where I know another pastor's wife who was also sexually abused and she came out of it like a little mouse. You know, she just totally turned in and wasn't very courageous at all. I was out of balance one way, she was out of balance the other way. And so to be healthy for any person, no matter what your problem is, it doesn't have to be that you were severely abused, you know, different things hurt different people. And the thing is, is God wants us to be confident. He doesn't want us to be insecure. Mm. So let's just say you're insecure. Well, if you're insecure, you need to not just say, well, I'm just insecure, and use that as an excuse to not live the life that Christ died for you to have. You need to say, I'm insecure, and that's not what Jesus died for me to have, and I want to get to the root of this, and I want to get over this. And so you have to start by setting boundaries for your life where you don't let people take advantage of you, where you, you know how to say no to things if you believe it's something God would have you say no to. Don't you guys find that you have to have some personal boundaries for your life? Yes. And it's, it's hard when people are wanting you to do things yeah. and you want to be liked. You know, because I grew up not, I didn't have friends, I didn't, and, and I was, I had a real rough way of dealing with things because I was hurting so bad. And so, um, I wanted friends. And so then I, I fell into, well, if I can't control you, then I'm going to let you control me. Mm. <laughs> and so, I was always out of balance one way or the other. And thank God I've learned now to treat other people right and to not let them, I, I, I've learned to not enable people wow. to keep their problems. I talked about that at, at Joel's last weekend. You know, we have to know when helping somebody's really helping them mm -hmm. and when we're just enabling them. And so boundaries I think are important and knowing the love of God is absolutely mandatory. That's that is, if, if you are hurting inside in your soul and you don't feel good about yourself, and we need to love ourselves. And I'm not saying be in love with yourself, but you need to love yourself because you cannot give away what you don't have. And so God loves us freely and unconditionally, and receiving that is the equivalent of learning to love yourself. I mean, if God can love me, who's perfect, then I can love me. And that doesn't mean that, you know, I dote on myself and think I have to have everything that I, I want. It just means that I respect who God made me to be. And I realize that I have weaknesses, but I also have strengths. I do make mistakes, but I'm not all a mistake. And... I mean, it took me a long time to really get that. I would go and stand in the mirror and point at myself and say, God loves you. Mm -hmm. wow. God loves you. And 
because I couldn't figure out why I couldn't love people. I kept hearing as a Christian I needed to love people, and I just was not a very loving person. I mean, I just wasn't. I was okay if I was getting my way, but if I wasn't, boy, look out. And uh, there was a lot of things that God had to change in me, but I really am like a totally different person. I still got some things that need to change in me, and I love working with God on changing what needs to be changed. I don't, that's not a problem for me. I know that his chastisement is love. You're not fighting it anymore. Did you used to fight it? Oh, yeah, I, because I didn't want something else to be wrong with me. Okay. I, you know, I already felt so bad about myself. That's why, I, actually, there's some scriptures in Hebrews, toward the end of Hebrews 5 and into Hebrews 6, and he said that you, by now you should be teaching others but you still need to be taught over and over the same messages. I can only feed you milk and not meat. Listen to this. Because you are unskilled in the doctrine of righteousness. So he was saying, I can't tell you what I'd really like to tell you, which was probably grow up. <laughs> mm -hmm. He said, I can't tell you what I'd really like to tell you because you still yet don't know who you are in Christ. And when you don't know who you are in Christ then you have a very hard time taking correction from people yeah. or taking correction from God because it just makes you feel worse about yourself than what you already do. Mm -hmm. But see, now I know the difference in conviction and condemnation. And so when God convicts me, I know that that's him loving me and I can say, God, thank you for loving me enough to not leave me the way I am. Mm 